Hello and welcome to another standard video. Today we're taking a look at Red White or Boros Burn, which is now possible thanks to the inclusion of a Boros Charm and Foundations. A two mana instant with three very useful modes can either deal four damage to target player or planeswalker, that's a great rate for two mana, can make our permanents gain indestructible until end of turn, potentially useful in the face of a sweeper like Day of Judgment that destroys as opposed to exiles or creatures, and last but not least we can give a creature double strike until end of turn. That one comes up if you're playing with Slickshot Show Off, which gets additional power whenever we cast a non-creature spell. So already for casting two spells, and one of those is Boros Charm, it can be worth it to give double strike as opposed to dealing four damage, because then Slickshot goes up to five power, which means it will be dealing more than just four damage to the opponent's face. So always good to keep that in mind when playing both of those cards. And then we've got four copies of Lightning Helix as another reason to dip into white, giving us basically a Lightning Strike that also gains three life, but we're still running the full set of Lightning Strike since we're maximizing all the burn spells, including at one mana Bolt Wave also in Foundations, so we'll be in standard for five long years, dealing three damage to each opponent as a sorcery, so basically a Lava Spike, and then a Burst Lightning also added in Foundations, basically an upgrade to Shock, dealing 2 damage to any target, but we can also maybe kick it if we pay 4 additional mana to deal 4 damage instead. So that can come up if we're maybe in the late game and we're top decking and already have a bunch of lanes in play. But again, we're also playing the original Shock, dealing 2 damage to any target, just to maximize all those burn spells. And then between Shock, Burst Lightning, Lightning Strike and Lightning Helix, we have a lot of burn spells that can still target creatures, so we also have quite a bit of removal to try and interact with other aggressive strategies, especially aura decks can be difficult to outrace once they land a lifelink enchantment on their creatures, so then having that interaction is very important. So that's the main distinction of this build, as opposed to maybe some of the previous red aggro decks we've seen in standard that rely more on pump spells and cards like Cell Sword to sacrifice creatures. This build is more about dealing with creatures through our burn spells and then closing out the game with those very same burn spells as well. Well, and then rounding out our creatures, we've got a full set of Hired Claw, a 1-2 Lizard, saying whenever we attack with one or more Lizards, Hired Claw deals 1 damage to target opponent. So even if the opponent has a blocker, Hired Claw can still maybe get some damage in. Also very good in multiples. And for 2 mana, we can put a plus 1 counter on Hired Claw if our opponent lost a life this turn, and only once each turn as well. And then Monastery Swiss Spear, still going to be a staple in red aggro decks for as long as it remains in standard. This one not in Foundations, so it will potentially rotate out in a little while, but for now still definitely a staple for any red aggressive decks. And then topping off her curve, you may have noticed Screaming Nemesis, a 3 mana 3-3 three, three with haste out of Duskmorn, saying when it's dealt damage, it deals that much damage to any other target. So if our opponent, let's say, blocks our Screaming Nemesis with a 4-4, four, four, now our opponent is taking 4 damage at least, so that can be pretty nice. And if a player is dealt damage this way, they cannot gain life for the rest of the game, which is a very useful ability in certain matchups where the opponent is kind of relying on their life gain to stabilize and to survive or burn burn spells. Now Screaming Nemesis just says no, and we can hopefully close out the game in time. And sometimes we can enable Screaming Nemesis with our own burn spells. If we have a Burst Lightning or a Shock, for instance, we can just spend one mana dealing two to the Nemesis, redirect it to the opponent, and now they cannot gain life for the rest of the game. Usually want to do that when the coast is clear and our opponent cannot remove a Screaming Nemesis in response, so we have to be a little bit careful. But yeah, even with a Lightning Strike or Lightning Helix, it can be worth it to just get that effect for the rest of the game, even if it means potentially losing the Screaming Nemesis. And then the mana base is not perfect, since we do not have a red-white verge land in standard, but we do have four copies of Inspiring Vantage, which is nice for an aggressive deck, and then a forge another untapped land, even though it costs us a bit of life, and then a braided bluffs enters tapped, so that's not great when playing an aggressive deck, but at least it deals one damage to target opponent, so even our lands are burn spells in a way, and then we do need the additional white sources to have reliable access to our two white spells, and ideally still have all our lands producing red mana, since we have so many of these red one drops, and then 10 mountains to round it out. Could consider playing Thrain Portal in the mana base as well, but I typically am not a fan of that card, because if you name white, again you'll be stuck with a land that cannot cast all your red spells. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. We get to play the bluffs on turn one, when we didn't have much else going on, get our one damage in, and fix our colors. 
And then a play we might end up making is to burst lightning our own screaming nemesis to prevent the opponent from gaining life. Although well, turn one swamp, maybe looking at a duress or a dreams of steel and oil taking our only creature. Eh, I'll play the hired claw. So we have 12 points of burn in hands. Although Mono Black is one of our worst matchups between hand disruption and a life gain from cards like Deep Cavern Bank and uh, especially Shieldred if they're running it can make it pretty difficult. Right, opponent with a Bandit's Talent, so they are on the discard deck. Yeah, maybe a Lightning Strike can go. Another Hard Claw isn't bad. So now we get two triggers. Still have Burst Lightning to maybe answer a bait. Right, another talent. So now a lightning can go. There's an argument for discarding a two drop, so I can potentially empty my hand next turn. But we'll see how this plays out. And they have a cut down left as well. Alright, attack. And we'll pass. Can Boros Charm for 4 damage, end of turn. Could make my team indestructible, I don't think that's necessarily worth it. Opponent levels up. And you can take 4 damage. Screaming Nemesis will have to wait. Usually don't mind being stuck on 2 lands as the aggro deck. But against discard, sometimes it's better to just empty your hands and then be able to top deck and cast whatever you draw. So we've got six more points of burn in hands. Nemesis they might be able to remove before taking any damage. And X, that's fine, that's gonna cost them two life. Although next turn they can maybe make the demon and start gaining life instead. So... Yeah, I'll go upstairs. Won't be able to double helix the demon anyway. And now Nemesis gets in. So yeah, for opponents locked into making a demon, they won't be able to block the Nemesis. Or else they take 6 damage. So it's not actually all that great. And that Lightning Helix can close out the game. Sweet. So yeah, damned if you do, damned if you don't. And could also burst lightning the Screaming Nemesis itself to redirect the damage. And our opponents cannot gain life for the rest of the game. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. I've got a functional hand. Turn 2 is going to be, depending on the matchup, if we suspect removal we might want to plot this lick shot, if not we can maybe get our 1 damage in. Alright, opponent also on the red aggro. So it is reasonable to want to just take out the hero now, before we get into more trouble. Although this is also kind of a race. So I think I still wait. And then... Yeah, I think I do plot the slick shots since our opponent's likely to have some cheaper burn spells. Then they might be incentivized to keep up mana. But that's a game we prefer playing, where we can just play everything at instant speed. Opponent also playing white. So it might be an aura deck. And yeah, they've got a dream start with Manifold Mouse. Can certainly take that out. And might be a good opportunity for Boros Charm with Double Strike. Oh, 
which is one more damage than just dealing four while the coast is clear. If our opponent plays a sheltered by ghosts, Helix can still take care of the Heartfire hero. And that's what they have. But they do gain four life in the process. So still don't love to see it. And I guess her opponent gained four more with Heartfire Hero dying, since it still technically has lifelink. So yeah, that was an eight-point swing. Opponent back up to 16. So they depleted a lot of our resources. Helix now takes care of Slickshot. All right, Screaming Nemesis, one of our better cards. Can attack. And then... Probably still fine to play Hard Claw. For opponent's got a burn spell, I don't want to lightning my own nemesis right now. And outside of another Sheltered by Ghosts, all their removal would be dealing damage to it, so that also means our opponent cannot gain life for the rest of the game. And yeah, our opponent concedes. I guess maybe they ran out of creatures or Screaming Nemesis is just too good. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Yeah, this hand's keepable, although none of our burn spells can deal damage to creatures. So, depending on the matchup, could be good or bad. If our opponent's keeping up a cutdown, may as well play our tap plan instead of Swiss Spear. And then next turn I could go Swiss Spear plus Bolt Wave. And Dread Knight's drawing a card. If they played it as a blocker, it could have been pretty effective, but now I'll get my damage in while I can. And yeah, our hand is shaping up nicely. Screaming Nemesis might get destroyed without enabling the ability. But on getting rid of a duress is surprising, because that's one of the better cards against Burn. Yeah, I'll take this opportunity to hit for three. And then even if they have removal, our opponent's within range of double Boros Charm, although don't have double white. Alright, Preacher's fine. And Shock was a decent draw as well. So, got a couple options. If I attack, they block Screaming Nemesis. They still take two, they can gain life. And then I guess Boros Charm plus Shock would be lethal. So that seems fine. Opponent takes it, so... And they're also dead to Boris Charm plus Shock. And with a single green, I guess we can make the fancy play of damaging our own nemesis and redirecting the damage. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand is missing a creature, so it won't have that burst damage potential. But we still have a lot of burn spells and functional mana. Some of our burn can double up as removal if needed. And our colors are looking good. Swamp Duress is unfortunate. Duress has picked up in popularity since rotation. Didn't really see it as a main deck card all that much. But now most blank decks have it. So sure, we'll Bolt Wave. If they play a bat, I'll have to shock it. So yeah, they've already reduced our hands down to just two burn spells, which is not really where we want to be. Opponent at 13 still. There's white mana for life gain. So yeah, unless we top deck a Screaming Nemesis and can damage it, this is not looking good. May as well take out the Bats. But we're out of cards and our opponent's only gonna start gaining more and more life. So 
So yeah, Screaming Nemesis is a must-have to try and have a chance in this matchup. Enduring Tenacity is bad news, so for all we know our opponent can set up the infinite life gain combo with a Conqueror next turn. And again, Screaming Nemesis is our only out. I guess I can double burn the Conqueror itself and prevent dying. Although that means I don't get to plot the slick shots. Our opponent would need land plus conquer exactly. I don't think I play around that. Attacking for one, also an option. Although I don't think we attack plus burst lightning there. So do you have it? No conquer. Gonna be a Starscape Cleric instead. That's basically more damage. I could burst lightning the Cleric itself, although it's not like they can block. It would just be to prevent taking more damage from the Offspring token, which is also gonna start adding up pretty quickly here. So yeah, how do we possibly win from here? Next turn Slick Shots, fire off some burn spells. Our opponent's dealing six, seven, with our creatures next turn. And yeah, with Offspring, there's gonna be another case trigger. Each case trigger is two damage if an Offspring token resolves. So I'm not necessarily dead next turn. I guess it's, yeah, three damage with Enduring Tenacity as well. So yeah, we're not dead on board. But it's not looking great. And then, sure, we'll burst lightning. Boris Charm for double strike. We're fighting the good fight here. Alright, points back down to five. So technically, we can kill them with a lightning strike, but any creature with case kills us. And all right, our opponent had to conquer, so there's no realistic way we survive this. GG's. Well, this is probably a, one of our worst matchups for good reason. But again, if we maybe found our screaming nemesis, we still might have been able to beat them. So conquer turns loss of life into life gain, and both Cleric and Enduring Tenacity do the reverse. So that sets up the infinite combo. Yeah, if you start with Case, it's one damage at a time, as opposed to attacking for four with the Enduring Tenacity, which makes it a little faster. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand's a little land-heavy. Got ten points of burn, but any land we draw here is kind of a disaster. So I think I got a mulligan. This is a tiny bit better. As a seven card hand, it would have been great. As a six card hand, we'll have to make some concessions, but um, probably keep bluffs over forge. I miss out on a turn one Swiss spear, but I don't have to take damage over and over. And then turn two, I could still go Swiss spear plus shock. And then now if we draw land, it still helps play the Nemesis, so it's not a disaster, whereas if we keep three lands, sure we're guaranteed a Nemesis on three, but then drawing lands equals flooding out. All right, now can I play the Iron Claw? Should have maybe attacked first on the off chance that they had an Elspeth Smite, then our opponent would have had to consider the possibility of us having a Monstrous Rage to pump Swiss Spear and have it survive. But uh, yeah, now I'm probably going a little bit too deep. Opponent a White Tokens deck. Not a great matchup, but uh, yeah, turn 3 Screaming Nemesis definitely helps. If they cannot destroy it right away and we get to untap and shock it, we can prevent the opponent from gaining life for the rest of the game. But we might see a get lost on it right away. Alright, we get to untap, that's great news. 
So go ahead and attack. And yeah, response to the life gain. We shock the screaming nemesis. Our opponent takes two, cannot gain life. And then probably just borrows charm for four more damage. Although I guess, yeah, they can still block here with a token, of course. They can also block the screaming nemesis and trade for it. But they would take one more damage either way. Yeah, I think Boris Charm deal 4, trigger prowess is worth it. Making indestructible also an option, just to preserve Screaming Nemesis. But at this point it's all about finishing out the game with our burn spells. And our opponent's at 1, so good luck. Beza, normally one of the best cards to stabilize. But uh, yeah, I guess we'll let Screaming Nemesis finish the job, although just attacking and triggering Hard Claw would have done it. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with uh, no creature special. So usually don't love these hands, but uh, yeah, it's probably fine. Swiss Spear, all the opponents representing Cutdown. So that's yeah, an interesting choice. If I wait a turn, I can play Swiss Spear, enable Prowess, although one Prowess trigger still doesn't survive cut down. So I'll just go for it and hope they don't have it. So far, so good. I've got multiple answers to a Deep Cavern Band, which they had. So it doesn't matter what they take, we'll get it back. But yeah, sometimes against black discard decks, it's worth keeping up. Shock or Burst Lightning to cheaply take care of the bait. And yeah, this makes sense by our opponent. Taking the Shock forces us to cast Burst Lightning to get our uh, card back, which means we don't have Burst Lightning later in the game to maybe kick it. But I'll prioritize running out a second Swiss Spear. So now we're in potentially a great shape, but we'll see. Opponent passes, so they are likely taking out one Swiss Spear. Start with a Bolt Wave. So if they had a cut down, they probably would have main phased it, so I'm guessing it's a go for the throat instead. I don't think we Boros Charm to potentially save the Swiss Spear. So, I mean, I could just let damage happen now. And if they take four, that's great. But we'll likely see a removal spell. Uh, anoint with Affliction. So, that exiles, so Boris Charm doesn't do anything. Question is if we just deal four damage with Prowess, that's seven. Yeah, I think that's fine, just to get the extra Prowess. Again, if they had cut down, I imagine they would have cast it while the coast was clear. Otherwise they can punish me by responding to the prowess trigger. So our opponent's at 5. We've got 5 points of burn in hand. So hopefully that lines up. Even if they play shieldred here, which is normally great, it's not going to be good enough. Same with an archfiend. And uh, a braided bluffs is one more damage, but I wouldn't be needing it. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a fine hand. Good mix of creatures, lands and burn spells. And a good curve as well. So, best case scenario, find our third land on curve. And our opponent doesn't have too much creature interaction. Being on the play also helps. And blue-white could be control, could be kind of an oculus deck. Less likely to be an aura deck if they're playing archive, I would say. And uh, yeah, if they're on control, just making sure slick shot resolves is more important than playing around potential removal. Since we also need to take counter spells into account. Put 
opponent passes. So yeah, this is an interesting choice now. Do we try and resolve Screaming Nemesis? Do we try and enable Slick Shots and fire off some burn spells? I would still say the likelihood of removal is higher than the likelihood of a counter spell, but removal would also take care of the Screaming Nemesis. So yeah, it's a tough call to make. Could also technically activate the Hired Claws ability, which is another decent use of our mana. Let's go to attackers and see what happens. Because I would really love to prevent the opponent from gaining life for the rest of the game with the Nemesis, and a fourth land could help us accomplish that. Also have Boros Charm to make my creatures indestructible, so we do have quite a few options. We'll start out with a shock. And then I'm not opposed to just activating Hired Claw. Alright, opponent takes 5, doesn't do anything. And now a temporary lockdown answers our board, but now the coast is clear for Screaming Nemesis. And we even drew another one. So yeah, could have maybe squeezed out a little bit more damage last turn by just playing another burn spell. But we kind of hedged our bets in the face of potential removal. And uh, yeah, opponent's just gonna scoop it up. Already too far behind, and now with Shock, we can also prevent the opponent from gaining life for the rest of the game. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Four lands is just too many. This hand doesn't pack enough of a punch. This is better. And maybe a Lightning Strike goes. Facing blue-black, at least Underground River will cost the opponent some life and a Spyglass Siren. So this is likely the blue-black mid-range deck with Enduring Curiosity. They will have quite a bit of creature removal. Some counter spells too, perhaps. And our opponent keeps up one mana as opposed to Exploring, so they might have a cut down in hand. I think I just attack, see what they do, and then I'm likely plotting a slick shot. And yeah, opponent had the cut down, so. We got our one extra damage in, plus one more from River, did not lose our Slick Shot. So, probably the best case scenario, given the circumstances. Now our opponent does keep up two mana, so they likely have a different removal spell. If they have a counter spell, I can pay for it. But yeah, they're also missing land drops, so they must really want to keep up removal if they're not sacking a map token to try and find another land. So... If I play Hired Claw, I give them another target for removal, even if it's not the Slick Shots. So I could just play both right now, and then be okay with losing one of them. And then go to Attackers, or we can Bolt Wave. I guess I'd want to Hired Claw first, in case they have a Conditional Counter Spell. Then Bolt Wave. Attack. And then... If their removal is cut down, I can respond with Burst Lightning to save Slick Shots. I think I just let damage happen here, but we'll likely see a 2-mana answer. Yep. Okay, so that happens. We'll keep a Burst Lightning for the time being. And a Deep Cavern Bat I'll have to take out. So, yeah, not great for us so far, but our opponent's is stuck on two lands, they have a pain land, they're at 11, so we've got a few things going for us. And for now, attack. Planning to pump Hired Claw. And still have our Lightning Helix available. Is our opponent finally going to sack a map token? Now we could... Helix, the uh, Spyglass Siren to prevent them from exploring. Definitely an interesting choice. 
trying to kind of keep my opponent on two lands versus our opponent maybe finding a land. If they just get a plus one counter here, that's fine, since we can still attack into it. I think we let this resolve and hope they don't find a land. It's going to be a mastermind on top. Now if they explore again, I can still attack into it with a hard claw. So I think again I let that resolve. And now an annoyance on top. So what's likely going to happen now is we attack, opponent blocks, we pump, opponent soaks up the damage, and then next turn they can anoint. But yeah, once again they haven't found land for turn. And once again they'll have to take damage to cast a removal spell. And now we've got five points of burn. So we're getting close. So that happens. Trying to think if there's a reason to fire off some burn spells now, because we're close to kicking a burst lightning. I think I do cast a helix now. Alright, and that's just game. So yeah, Pornon got a bit unlucky, but they could have maybe helped themselves out more by exploring sooner. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a promising hand. Always love to see Inspiring Vantage as our first couple lanes. Opponent blue-green with a hedge maze. I see, I think this is the crab tempo deck. I'll start with a hard claw, since we just picked up another one. Pretty good in multiples. And yeah, one drops, also pretty good in this matchup. Can expect the opponent to fill the graveyard to play Tolarian Terror and the... Uh, Addy Merc Crab with some cheap cantrips, maybe some fight spells, and then up the Beanstalk for card draw, and their interaction is mostly bounce spells, which, uh, yeah, cheap one mana creatures is the best way to counteract those. And we even drew a third hard claw, so probably gonna see into the Floodmon the first one, but still would have wanted to play the other copies out. So the sooner we can delay the opponent playing a 5-5, the better. But they're already getting close. So now up the Beanstalk. Opponent is still at 20, so they've got that going for them. But uh, we're probably fine attacking into a creature if it means dealing a bunch of damage. So this is likely our opponent sitting on an Edimark crab to tap two creatures down. But the crab itself also enters tapped. So that's fine. Plan is probably Swiss Spear plus Bolt Wave. Our opponent could also try to bounce something with this town in big enough. Which can then pick up the up the beanstalk. But yeah, there's crab, tap down double Swiss Spear. And then Hard Claw still get in for 6 damage, basically. So, yeah. Seems like a pretty good matchup for the burn deck, especially with this type of draw. Right, opponent actually has another bounce spell. But that's why Hard Claw is pretty good here. Still deals 1 damage. And the bluffs is 1 more. So we can close out the game just with burn spells, and at least the build I tried was not running any counter spells. Although they do have a bit of life gain with Seed of Hope, that's true. So not just that to burn spells now. Opponent's got a crab in hand that they will be able to play for two mana, and now Tolarian Terror. So they're doing a great job of trying to stabilize. I imagine our opponent's going to tap down the Hired Claws which then wouldn't be dealing any damage, so there's no real advantage to play another one out. But now Slickshot adds another interesting twist. So I can cast Slickshot, and then our opponent may be interested in 
Tapping down the slick shot instead. At which point playing Hard Claw may be worth it again. Yeah, I guess we'll play Hard Claw and then I suspect our opponent will be tapping down double Hard Claw. And we just get in for one with the slick shots. But yeah, there was no real way to play it differently, because if we keep up a mana for Burst Lightning, then they don't have a reason to necessarily tap down double Hard Claw. I guess that's not true. I could have gone to attackers, and then they may still tap double Claw, and then Burst Lightning gets two more damage in thanks to the Slick Shot. And if they tap down Slick Shot, then attacking with one Hard Claw could have still gotten two damage in, which may or may not have been worth it. But yeah, opponent's drawing a lot of cards, playing lots of 5-5s. Five but the truth is, they're at 6, and there's too many threats for them to deal with. So if I just move to attackers, that's 3 damage from Hard Claw, and then Lightning Strike plus Burst Lightning is lethal. Even if they have another Seed of Hope, that's not going to save them. So yeah, they either have a Bounce Spell for Slick Shot, or they have Life Gain. But they can't have both. So yeah, I've been impressed by Hard Claw over alternatives like maybe a G2 Lava Runner I've also tried in the one drop slot. But you can see in this board state, Lava Runner would not have been quite as impressive. So yeah, that happens. And then I can burst lightning their face. Which would be presenting lethal. So then our opponent needs to respond, and then Lightning Strike is game. Suppose we could have also considered sending in the Swiss Spears, since they only had four blockers. It's gonna be into the Flood Maw, and that's game. So yeah, our opponent put up a great fight, but we just had an awesome start, so they couldn't really keep up. Awesome! So yeah, Boros Burn is the real deal, might be the new deck to beat on the ladder, and the inclusion of Screaming Nemesis is a great help in the life gain matchups, which also have been popping up more and more recently, so that also gives you kind of a main deck answer to those, while still being great by itself, often getting in for three, and if they don't have a clean answer, either getting another attack in, or potentially trading for a creature and dealing even more damage on the way out. So yeah, quite an upgrade over Boros Reckoner, which I remember seeing quite a bit of play in standard as well in its heyday. So yeah, overall can certainly recommend Boros Burn. There's a few potential changes you can make to the list. There's a few flex slots. I have uh, tried Vaishino Pyromancer as well with yeah, middling results, but so far I've been happy with the Hired Claw at one mana, Swiss Spear I think you need to include no matter what, and then of course Screaming Nemesis has been great. So then the question is, how many additional creatures do you play? Do you play the full set of the uh, Slick Shot? And do you include Monstrous Rage? Because there are of course opportunities for Monstrous Rage to deal a lot of damage for just one mana, but you also potentially run into removal, blanking it, and then it's not as good of a top deck if you just need to find those last points of damage. So yeah, there's a lot of ways to build Boros Burn, but I think the inclusion of White overall has been successful. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.